Uh, Denise Roche. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to take the first call for the Greens on the Passport Amendment Bill No. 2. Um, it's, I think when we are looking at this bill, at its introduction, it's important to trace back to where the inspiration um, for this policy change came from. And I believe that it was from a petition launched by Kyle um, Lockwood um, after, and he, in his uh, article in the, his interview in the Sunday Star Times, said that he was inspired to create the petition after he saw a really upset mother um, with her son at Melbourne Airport who could not fly because um, her passport had uh, less than six months left on it, so it was about to become invalid. Um, and it's important that we acknowledge the democratic process, that it is a petition that ultimately led to, um, to this bill coming to the House, and that it was a campaign that did that. Although the democratic process can move really slowly, we really do need to celebrate the fact that an ordinary New Zealander was listened to in the halls of power, and we are hopefully changing policy as a result. And I guess, from our point of view, this is a, um, a good, um, a partial application of one of the principles or one of, the, of our founding charter for the Green Party, which is appropriate decision making, that decisions be made directly at the appropriate level by those affected. And although the people who are affected uh, didn't get directly to decide, I'm glad that we've listened to the voice of Kyle Lockwood. And so we've been supporting that campaign um, for 10-year uh, passports throughout the process. My colleague, Mojo Mathers, uh, agreed with the recommendation from the Government Administration Committee to review the current system with a view to extending it once that petition came to the Select Committee. And we support this move, sir, for a variety of reasons. The policy, a 10-year passport, will save ordinary New Zealanders the hassle, the stress, time-consuming nature of applying for a new passport, as well as saving money. And there's been some discussion about what it costs. Um, the proposed, uh, the current cost of the five-year passport is $134.50 or uh, $26.90 a year and the proposed fee uh, of $180 for the 10-year passport works out to be just $18 a year. This proposal also brings us into line uh, with international standards. Uh, much of the European Union, um, most of the Americas, most of Asia, and even our cousins in Australia um, have 10-year passports. I think it's fair to acknowledge the evidence that was presented during the inquiry of the Select Committee from the Department of Internal Affairs, um, that, but I have to say that they ultimately concluded in their evidence by saying that they consider a 10-year validity period acceptable. But they had serious concerns about reintroducing 10-year passports because they feared that it would encourage criminal organisations to invest in counterfeiting uh, the New Zealand passports. And I think that's a fair concern, um, which I guess is why we're so disappointed, sir, um, that this national government has been um, investing fewer resources into public safe safety through the police, which would counter that. Um, and today, my colleague, uh, that was today, yeah, my colleague David Clendon yesterday actually released figures that um, showed that spending in the, uh, on the police budget has, has fallen down by 5.7%, which means that there's less uh, public safety happening, sir, and certainly less investigation. And this is sadly emblematic of uh, the national government's chronic, chronic underinvestment in public services. And that's a point that was reinforced too, sir, with a report um, released on the 8th of June from the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions saying 
that our health system, for example, was a billion dollars worse off than six years ago, uh, which works out to be about $220 per New Zealander. The fact that the department's submission identified the change from five years to 10 years, that this could lead to a revenue problem further reinforces my point that under this national-led government, our public services are scrambling to penny pinch um, the pockets of hard-working New Zealanders because the government's basically been fiscally reckless by giving tax cuts to the very wealthy on their top incomes. So we're assured uh, by the evidence given in the Select Committee that Biometric passports reduce the risks of counterfeiting and identity fraud to such a degree that the validity period could be safely extended, and that's a direct quote. However, we do have some concerns uh, by, the, um, by the findings of Simon Murdoch's passport re security view, review as it was, it's been laid out in the regulatory impact statement um, for this bill, where he concludes by saying, um, that investment would be necessary to reduce the risks of moving to a 10-year validity period, which is why Thank we you. would much prefer that the added security of the biometric pa passports was supplemented by adequate funding um, in our public safety. We need to restore that 5.7% to the police. While technology can be, Sarah, a wonderful thing, it's no substitute for an adequately funded public service. We cannot and should not skimp on funding our core public services. An investment approach is absolutely crucial for our country's security. There are other measures in this bill that, um, that we support, such as better provisions for cancellation and usage of our travel document database. And, in the 21st century, um, it shouldn't be necessary uh, for a modern government department to physically can cancel a document which needs to be sent and received, uh, sometimes from half a world away. Uh, the, the, and also this move, uh, the data move, will um, save us money and time. So despite the many disagreements with my colleagues across the House, um, on many, many issues. I'm happy, uh, and we're happy to be working with them on this issue to make a change that was spurred on by an ordinary New Zealand. It's fantastic to see democracy in action when it actually works. Thank you.